Hey guys, good morning. Believe it or not, the sun is out, no rain. As nice as it is, there is something that is even more fun and that is heading over to the studio and doing the third episode of how to mix electronic dance music. Yeah, studio, best place in the world the best smell there's still a little of Chinese takeaway smell in here but anyways um, the first episode of mixing EDM was all about like getting the tonal balance right and low cutting everything the second step was reverb mostly which is also extremely important today we will get into like trying to get the last 10% out of the song which are by far the hardest. And no matter for how long you produce, how much experience you have, those last 10% are always challenging. It's a lot about trying things out, EQing here a little away, adding there some frequencies, lowering the volume on one element, making one wet and put it in the background, stereo spreading stuff and all these kind of techniques, plus compression and some more advanced things where you try to make something sound like something and it actually isn't. For example, that Waves Max Bass plugin that, that fakes frequencies that aren't actually there so that your bass is better audible on small speakers. Usually I record while I'm doing the things and show you them, but since the last 10% is all about really trying it out, I don't wanna bore you to death with me failing the entire day. I would just sit here, be really concentrated on the mix make everything get as far as I can, and then show you the techniques that I ended up using. Wasting time, trying to find some peace of mind. Feel so high, can't seem to get enough. All done with the mixing marathon. I, I was so smart to write everything down so that I don't forget to tell you what I did. But um, yeah, I did it on the back of my Armada contract. Not really the wisest move, but anyways, let's get straight into it. First up, the rough mix of the artist, and then my version after today's entire mixing session. I hope you're hearing a difference. If you don't, then um, yeah, I can't help you. Stop listening to these producer tutorial things on, on your phone or on small crappy speakers or your laptop. You need decent headphones or speakers. But let's get right into it. The first thing I did was a chorus on the main vocals and yeah, in general, just the vocals. So let's get through all of the vocal parts. So these right here, all the ones, are the vocals. We got first like the main vocal that is used very sparingly in, in the drop, which is kind of good. That's what a DJ drop should be like. Don't let me down when I need you most. And on the main vocal, the first one I did quite a lot. That's it without the processing. Don't let me down when I need you most. And then again with the processing. Don't let me down when I need you most. So we got here first up an EQ, getting rid of the low frequencies we won't need. The vocal rider, it's really handy. This is for lazy producers. Instead of doing it with automation, this will do it for you right along the vocal. Whenever it's loud, it will just dim it down and this way you get a vocal that is way more equal. Don't let me down when I need you most. The noise gate was just to get rid of some, I mean, you could hear a little bit of bleed from the headphones. So just to double check the, the noise gate before actually compressing. I used here the, the Logic compressor. It's good. It's not the best. There are better compressors, but for the sake of this video, I just used what probably most people have. And then last, uh, de esser because after the compression, the, the S sounds and everything that was harsh was sticking out too much. 
So I just decreased a little bit those frequencies. And at the very end, again an EQ, again double checking the low end. This is probably already unnecessary, but boosting the top frequencies definitely helps on recorded vocals. Then on a bus, the Valhalla Vintage Verb with quite a lot of decay, 80s colored vintage reverb, and I cut it away the low frequencies at 450 Hz. It's really not needed because there's any way nothing, so just making it a little bit cleaner. And on bus number 12, the Waves H delay, just to have that tiny bit of delay. That's really a matter of style if you want to have delay on your vocal or not. Even though some people that don't put reverb on their vocals and do it with delay, not really my thing. I like to use both. And if you want to go for even more delay so that it's audible, I would start automating it on the last word of the phrase just to have that delay going into the gaps between the vocals. If you have it constantly on, it might overlap with the parts underneath, then you have to delay on top of the vocal, it gets muddy, so you really have to automate it. Next up, I've created another layer, it's called Low. It's not something that was in the original mix. I did it, it's actually not really a mixing decision, it's already going more into a creative direction, but I mixed the lower octave of the vocal just a tiny bit in there because I wasn't missing like that that bottom end in the vocal. So here again the main vocal without the low. Don't let me down when I need you most. And then with the low. Don't let me down when I need you most. It's just a tiny bit. I mean now you can hear it clearly because it's not within the mix. In the mix you almost can't hear it but it still adds a little bit to it. Then we have this actually really cool chop pitched vocal part in there, which is actually the main thing of the entire song. That's the low layer. I didn't have to do a whole lot to it. I decided to add chorus to it. It's the mega wide chorus setting and logic. I love to use it. It just makes everything wide. So I added half of it to it to make it like sit not in the middle, but also not make it extremely wide because there is still a second layer with the higher pitched vocals. And with these I decided to make them extremely wide. They sit really, really at the furthest left and right as possible. Just to create that space, the main vocal is in the middle, the, the sub pitched vocal sits a little bit more outside and the higher pitched ones really to the sides. This way you have more space for, for those vocals. They don't interfere anymore that much. They're not all sitting just in the middle. And then something a little bit nerdier that I had to do is using the Soothy plugin. It reduces resonating frequencies. I've made an entire video about it. If you're interested, go check it out. I think it's called like the plugin that does the EQing for you. And that's basically what it does. It picks up resonating frequencies and reduces them automatically whenever they appear. Which was here really needed because the cutting and changing of the vocal created some resonating frequencies that are not that nice. I mean, you could increase the depth. That's already too much. But without it, it's, it's too harsh a little. You can hear like um, high pitched S kind of sounds. And with the Suli, they're, they're not gone, but they're reduced so much that in the mix it doesn't matter anymore. I could actually use a tiny bit more. Ah, no. It's hard to find the sweet spot between too much of it, because too much makes it. Uh, very dull and too little makes it really harsh. So somewhere in between, it's always like finding that compromise. The next thing for me that was sticking out was really the bass, the growl bass. As you know, this bass consists of three layers. The sub one, the growl bass, and then a top bass. 
And the girl one, I don't know, it, it just didn't feel right. A little dull, not enough attack. It had too much low and not enough like of the mid part of the base. So I added uh, the pluck child, which is like a fair child thing from Waves. Um, those are the settings just to just to change the tone a little. Let's listen to it without the compressor and with again. Gets a little bit like this fuzziness, crispiness in, in the mid top kind of part, which really helps the bass to stick a little bit more out of the mix while keeping it a little lower in volume and having less low end that will interfere with the kick. I did a bunch of other things that I already covered in other videos, so I don't want to repeat that. Mostly like imaging things, a stereo spreading, a lot of EQing. If you're interested in that, I will link the video up here. And I will also link down below in the description the video number one and two if you're interested in those. I think there will be one more part, like part four, trying to squeeze out the last one or two percent out of the song by grouping up things, summing them, and then also showing you how to do the master and like get it ready at least to a state where you can send it out as a demo to a label. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, stay tuned for, for part number four, which will definitely, I think, be the last one. Also, don't forget to subscribe, to like. There is a giveaway coming up this week, as well as another release on my main label by Brandon Wolf called Breathe. It's, it's really a nice track. He made already two on the label. That's his third one. I can't wait to share it with you. And for me, it's now time just to open up my own song and get the mixing done on that one as well. Still struggling a little with the style, but it's, it's going into the right direction. Feel so high, can't seem to get enough. You're the only remedy. Show me the light that's in front of me.